It's going to have my side. Okay, it ain't horse. Okay, let's start. So, um, hang on, I'm not particularly happy with the camera position. One moment. Okay, okay, okay. How's that? Okay. Okay, guys. So, uh, okay. So from here, um, every just uh, stepping forward, left leg forward, I U K H, um, punch knee, uh, back. Just think about your stance. Yeah, then back to she's that time. Okay, side off the side, uh, she, uh, back. Think about your stance. Think about your hips, nice and basic. Go, rock, uh, back. She, touch, uh, uh, cool, go, uh, back. One count. Itch, me, uh, side, uh, she, go. Rock. Shitch. Hatch. Cool. One more jaw. Okay, okay, all right. Like, we're not going to spend forever about this. It's really super basic, but like, really be mindful. Sorry, hang on. Really be super mindful that, that you're not. That you're not uh, kind of sweeping across your body for our UK. Like, of course, I want you to hit that point of preparation. So, good hikite and making sure that this course is correct. And like, the course itself is not overly, not overly important. It's a little bit important, but what is super important is that you kind of get in that shoulder use. So that hikite preparation prepares the shoulder so you can snap it forward. Just like preparing correctly here, or preparing correctly here, or here, and those basic blocks. You're trying to go through the whole spectrum of, of preparatory uh, shoulder position, yeah? So if you're just swinging up uh, for the UK, it's not so good. So be super careful about that. But, like, that's, that's the most important. Like, some people are kind of making that point, but you're quite stiff, and then you're blocking with your hand. Try once you get that kind of ingrained position that you snap, that you snap your technique so that this is kind of almost rebounding off the higite to produce the UK. Understand? Okay, okay, nice racks, guys. One count, left leg first, block, punch back. Okay, itch. Knee. That's hand. She. Go. Rook. Shitch. Hatch. Come. And jaw. Okay, good, good, good. So, um, yeah, also try to try to maximize that hip rotation. So, so don't be, although you're, you know, you're going to step with your left leg, say, uh, and, the, and ultimately you're going to rotate your hips so your left, left, left hip is leading. Don't, don't initiate it from that point. As much as, as much as you're preparing with this hikite hand and this hand is going up, you're kind of producing this kind of counter rotation. So like my upper body or like my, my kind of upper body is, is leading with the preparatory hand uh, whilst making hikite, so I'm twisting that way, whilst the lower part of the body is, is wanting to twist the opposite side. So my left leg is going forward, which wants to make, make my body twist that way, and my right hand is going forward, which makes my body want to go that way. So I'm trying to have that kind of maximum twist and then release into the technique. You, you understand? And, and if you do that, if you do that, you kind of reach that apex of compression really quickly and then it'll kind of release into the technique so you're not stiffly holding that point but you're you're hitting hitting that apex which produces the technique and then you can reduce gakazuki understand okay i want to spend 30 seconds guys well i want you to spend 30 seconds just trying to get that right just try hit that hit that apex of compression and then release into the ag uk as it's the most natural body motion go for it 30 seconds no stiffness, yeah, no stiffness. That's it, that's it. Watch your stance, Katie.
relax your upper body, Christian, and then and then as soon as you finish the technique, relax back to Yoy again. Don't hold your form. Well, a little bit hold your form, then relax straight away. Good, strong Gakazuki, Vivian. Okay, I'm a good, good, good. Okay, everyone understand? Like, I mean, that's super basic, but one of my pet hates is that people don't prepare kind of correctly for our UK. And I think the reason why is because we don't have any preparatory point. Like, like we learn how to prepare for Gerambarai. We learn how to prepare for Sotuki, you know, on the basic level when you first start. But our UK just starts from your hip and finishes from your hip, right? So, so you never really get to get that movement ingrained. So when you don't start from that point, say you start from your position, then it, it kind of be, you kind of go straight into the movement without that preparatory hikite. So it's worth kind of practicing. Just again, not because the form is important, because of course in, in reality we'd never start from here, but just so you get that use of your shoulder, you get that kind of movement that way in order for, to kind of bring it back, to snap it forward, that you can then, then apply in any kind of motion. Understand? Okay, Linda took off her glove just to give it the thumbs up. Thank you, Linda. Okay, okay, next one, guys. Exactly the same, a little bit of Yoriash. So again, you're gonna kind of really look for that apex, like that kind of compression whilst you're sliding forward. So you're driving in, driving in, Ayuke Kakazuki. Okay, then from here, maintain your form, maintain. Okay, then Yoriash back. Yoriash Ayuke Kakazuki. I'm back. So, okay, right leg forward, right leg forward, Yoriash. Okay, maintain right leg forward, knee. I'm back to where you started. Okay, left leg. Left hand, and you can get suki. And then again, left hand, knee. I'm back. Okay, right side, itch. Knee. I'm back. Okay, can we understand? So it's just, and you can get suki twice. So left hand, left hand. And then same, right hand, right hand. But well, you get that yori actually, just watch from the side. So from, from this point, we're trying to kind of have that, that same form, same kind of reach that apex of contraction, but releasing in yori so a little bit of a, of a slide. So instead of a pace or a full stance, you kind of go in a full stance and a half. That's your kind of target, yeah? So from here, instead of one pace, you're trying to hit that target of yori driving in, driving in, and then replicating, coming back as well. And then you're back to where you start again. Understand? Okay, just try it, guys. Give it a go. Ag Yuki Gakazuki, back Ag Yuki Gakazuki, back to Shizentai, opposite side. Okay, go for it. Ah, uh, Sylvia, get that good hikite preparation both times. Then, Sophia, maintain back straight, yeah? Keep your status and your back straight all the way through. Ah, Elizabeth, a good hickey day. Hickey day. Then, uh, Andre, keep your shoulders relaxed. Ah, Chris Matthews, watch that front knee. It's wobbling like Elvis. Okay, okay. So, guys. Um, like I just kind of pointed out a few things but like the kind of generic problems that a lot of people are doing, yeah? Then, okay, like the reason why, we, well, a couple of reasons why we're doing this, but one of the fundamental reasons is that we try to maintain our stance and maintain our seat you said. So keeping your back straight and maintaining that kind of stability in your knees, both knees, yeah? So, so if I go forward, then, well, actually forward or back, then the tendency is to kind of, because you're kind of being in, in a flowing stance, you're making your, yes, the tendency is that you kind of, like landing it open, and so your knees pointing out, and then maybe you kind of come back to a good stance, and you rotate your your knee starts coming back, uh, your back leg that is uh, on the gakazuki. Okay, maybe some of you are doing that, or you're getting that kind of front knee moving, front knee moving, especially when you come back. Yeah, front knee is an issue coming back where people are turning this way, and the front knees move, and then you're rotating your knee back as you make gakazuki, or alternatively as you're coming back, your back knee sticks out and then it comes back in again. 
or worst case scenario, both knees are wobbling about. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is your center line. So, so people are kind of leaning in as they start. So they're leaning in to start and they're leaning back, breaking the line to come back, yeah? So I really want you to kind of micromanage your center line as you shift backwards and forwards. Understand? Okay, that's one point. Second point. And the second point is, is how are you shifting? Like, we'll, we'll talk about going back first. Like, like a lot of people, as you've made the first Agupigaksuki, a lot of people, you are releasing from your leg. So it's this leg that's releasing, and then you're, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of playing catch up. Uh, some people are both legs and you're jumping. That's not so good either. Like, Yoriash is basically where you're, you're, you know, you have your center line, and you've got one foot in one side of your center line, and you look foot the other side of your center line. And if you want to go that way, it's this leg that pushes you. If you want to go that way, it's this leg that pushes you. Now, for sure, you've got to release one leg first in order for the other one to push. But that's very different from stepping and playing catch up. You understand? Yeah? So I want you to focus on this, yeah? Like, of course, stance, of course, center line. But from here, I'm going to release my front leg, and it's my back leg that's driving me forward, driving me forward. Then I'm going to release my back leg, but it's my front leg that's pushing me back before I bring the gap as you can get. Okay? Try, guys. Give it a go. One more minute. Uh, stance, Vivian, stance, maintain that stance right the way through. Keep your head still, look forward. Then, Isabel, don't over-rotate your arm. When you block out, you can don't over-rotate. Even though your body rotates, that arm is 90 degrees to where you're going. Uh, Gaggy, that front, that back knee is wobbling out. Then Gary, Gary Richie, keep that head straight. I know you're trying to check your body, but you've got to check it with your senses, with your ninja senses, not your eyes. Uh, Anne, Anne and Rolf, Anne, too much wobbling in your stance. Maintain that stability, yeah? Uh, Brian Moon, driving into the Gakazuki, uh, sorry, into the Ag UK. Not driving into the Gakazuki, drive into the Ag UK. That's where the Oriash happens. Yeah, Justina, you're only moving back or forward on the block, not on the punch. Okay, I mean, a few people are doing this, yeah? A few people are just seen doing it. So have, have complete stillness in your Gakazuki. So from here, you're making the Oriash on the Ag UK, don't move on the Gakazuki. You're making the Oriash on the Ag UK, don't move on the Gakazuki. Okay? I want to see movement, then stability. Movement, then stability. Okay, last 30 seconds, just to get that right. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, guys, let's try swing power, yeah? So one count there, back, back to Shizenta, yeah? Really think about all those points. Okay, spin power, keep some eye count, yeah? Okay, left leg first. Ish! B! Turn! G! Go! No! Hatch. Cool. Last one. Joe. Ah, uh, Garmin, your stance is all over the place. As you get tighter and tighter, you start, you're losing your stance, yeah? Go and maintain that stance right the way through. Okay, Yame, relax. Actually, Uh, 
Okay, good. Okay, next one, guys. Uh, okay, just to try to keep on, keep uh, an idea about those things that we've just covered, like the stability of your stance, maintain center line, kind of uh, making sure that you're landing in good stance. Um, okay, but a little bit different. So from here, make a zigzag. Zigzag. Okay, nice, relax. Just, uh, just migrate. Try to micromanage your body. You kind of, you're in shoulder, that's your hip square. Shoulder come eye, so you're not in, not one hand in front of the other. Kind of that hip elbow connection, like hands kind of facing each other. That type of position. Maintaining that form. Migrating back. Itch. Knee. Asan. Shin. No. Rook. Shit. Hatch. Coop. Jaw. Okay, good. Change. It's like same. Left leg kicking. Okay, shoulder dash, hip square. Elbow engage. Okay, itch. Knee. Sun. She. Go. Look. Shitch. Hatch. Kum. Jaw. Okay, I'm here. Okay. So, guys, we're going to try to kind of link these things together, but, but for now, just like uh, my getty. Then, like when I see people do my getty, like a lot of the time, they're, they're putting so much effort into doing the kick, but often that effort is a little bit counterproductive. So you're kind of putting that, uh, that kind of effort into your upper body movement. Really, I want you to kind of obviously keep this relaxed, micromanage so it's controlled, it's not moving about. There's no tension in your body, yeah? you don't want that. But also what's really super important is that you're kind of maintaining that center whilst using your pelvic girdle. So, so your pelvis is being rotated in as you kick without it being transferred to kind of the crunching of your upper body or the tension of your upper body. Do you understand? Yeah, so on this very basic level, like just kicking my game, <clears throat> you're in shoulder dutch. You're gonna engage your core. First of all, abs are gonna bring that knee up and you're gonna get that knee up. But ultimately, it's your tailbone kicking through that kind of comes back. At no point do you rotate either way. At no point do you lose your form. Maintaining center line, just kicking, coming back, yeah? There's kicking, coming back, that's all. Understand? Okay, just check yourself, guys. And I know it's super difficult to micromanage and analyze your, your movement, but try to maintain that kind of showman of all your body. Okay, go for it. Like just uh, in your time, let me be 10 on each side, some like that. Susanna, you're leaning back as you kick. Justina, let it flow, yeah? You're kind of stopping on the preparatory motion. Let it flow a little bit more. Lucky with the cat dragged in. Oh, it's Rue Sensei. How do we do My guinea, Rue. Don't go from showman, uh, Hamidach, yeah? Go from showman. Rolf, you're kind of allowing yourself to go into showman. Okay, Yame. Then R Rolf's doing this, but he's not the only one. Like, like, there's, there's a certain level of kind of, uh, well, it's, it's quite easy to be cut, to do this mindlessly. So, okay, here's what Rolf was doing, but Rolf was not the only one. Just kind of like, one, two, three. And you're kind of almost bouncing off that hick take or that hick yash position. So you're kicking, coming back, kicking, coming back. And so it's like that, that initiation that is taking that kick right the way through. And to be fair, to be fair, that's quite a relaxed way of kicking. But, but the problem is, is that you're, that there's, so, there's so many movements that go on before that leg gets out that it slows the kick down. Like, Ru has just arrived. He kicked, he deserves it, let me assure you. So, so like, you know, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to kick Ru, right? And I can just kind of let that leg swing and, and let it go. And like, you know, the kick is fluid and it's coming out. But, you know, maybe the kick seems kind of fairly smooth and fast, but the kick doesn't start here. The kick doesn't even start here. The kick starts with all this micro, this, well, it's not even micro movement. Lots of movement going on before I let that kick out. Rather than just micromanaging my body and letting the kick go. Just letting the kick go. Relax, relax, let the kick go. Good. Do you understand? I want you to try to micromanage that 
without all your other body stuff going on and just kick. And so the one thing you don't want to do is start bouncing. Other thing you don't want to do is start going with your upper body because that's what happens when you start bouncing. Just from showing that, imagine you're going to kick, bump, kick, and that's it. Understand? Okay, four more minutes. Give it a go, guys. Raoul, relax that upper body. You're kind of dropping your hands down every time you kick to try to add power to it. Don't, relax, relax, relax. Uh, Susanna, you're still leaning back as you kick. Then tailbone in more, Garmin, yeah? Okay, okay, yeah, mate. Okay, I mean, we won't spend forever about this because this is something that like, people need to constantly work on. Something that we all should constantly work on. The only thing I would say is that as soon as you start to kind of do it rhythmically, then patterns start to kind of be ignored. So, you know, you, like, I, I'm just watching people a couple of times and, you know, you're kind of trying to do it and you're kicking and then you're kicking and then you're kicking and kicking and all of a sudden it becomes kind of that rhythmic bounce. And as soon as that happens, then all these little tells are kind of ignored, whereas you're just still. If you stand still and feel that stillness in your body and then go from that position, it's really easy to identify those things that you do to initiate the technique. You know, Sam? So kind of practicing from stillness sometimes is really super important. Okay, having said that. Okay, over again, every zig Okay. So again, go from that stillness position. Okay, I want you to kind of kick my gaze then come back to Hamley. So this my gaze back Hamley. And then you kind of go into Hami Kamai and then Ram Washige down. Okay, and let's just shuffle back, change stance. Okay, so again from stillness. Mai Giri, Hamni, Mawashigiri, Zenksach, back to stillness, yeah? Okay, okay, so hit me. And back to stillness. Okay, Sam, Chi. Ah, back to start. Okay, go, look. Ah, back to start. Okay, shit, hutch. And you're right. Okay, everybody understand? Are we good? So, guys, just uh, I want you to kind of try that out, try to get that kind of rhythm. So at the moment, practice from stillness. So each time, you're going to start with six touch, shaman, shaman kamai, so hip square, hand square. And then you're going to start from this point. Go from your center, tweaking that tailbone, getting that abdomen to get your knee up. You're kicking handy back shoulder. Again, land in stillness again before kind of resetting. Okay. Well, okay, give it a go, guys. Come on, let's try. What's up, Katie? Sorry. Are you, are you landing from that more scary in, in showman? Yeah, for now, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Neil, Neil Morgan, start from complete showman dash with my giri. Uh, Roger, you're using your hands both on the my giri and the mawashi giri now. Then Paul, Paul, the sharp drive into showman, yeah, just as a training method, yeah, after the mawashi giri. Okay, I mean, guys, just watch two seconds. Like, worst case scenario, yeah, is, is again, when you're, you're kind of, um, I don't know, trying to increase the speed of the technique. Or the, like, sometimes by trying to increase the speed of the kick, you actually slow down the speed of the, uh, of the technique. Uh, and what I mean by that, uh, what I mean by that is that, is that, you know, like, like the kick might seem faster when you're like this. And, and, and it kind of like, you know, it kind of gives you that sense that the kick is really good, but you, you're not, you're ignoring all the rest, the rest that's going around here, yeah? So a few people are doing this. Again, I just want you to really, for now, just micromanage that, that, that upper body. So you're going, you're, you're basically going from your abdomen to reduce my area, and then you can get that rotation to reduce the, the motion area, but it's not about this. It's just about that kind of, the, the tweaking of my area, tweaking of motion area, 
but you're super managing your upper body. Understand? Just two minutes, guys. Try to get that right. Super difficult as it is. There's better driving into Shulman after the Mawashigeri. Guys, everybody drive into Shulman on the Mawashigeri, yeah? just as a practice, just as a, as, a, as a way to kind of give yourself more things to do. Guys, kick with your supporting leg and your hip. Don't kick with the kicking leg. Supporting leg and the hip kick. And the, the kicking leg is just there as an appendage. Okay, good. Yeah, mate. Have we got it? Have we understand? Yes. Yeah. So, like, when you start kind of stripping away these basic techniques and just trying to do the pure minimum, you know, like sometimes I say, like that lazy karate, lazy karate, where you're not doing too much, you're just doing the bare minimum to do to uh, to kind of uh, you know to to try to maximize your efficiency. Then that then it becomes really super difficult because all these little tells are the things that happen just um, kind of automatically. Yeah. So really, as much as possible, kind of peel away effort in your technique like sometimes like i during normal times i do yoga my one of my yoga instructors just says you know find the position that you're in and then peel away effort find that position but do it do, do it with as least effort as possible and that's the same as karate yeah just peel away the effort and all this other body stuff is, is meaningless yeah okay let's try spin back okay left leg forward so my game motion and back change stance okay yoy. Last one, last one, two. Ah. Oh, yummy. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Every good? Rue sensei is good. Manisha's run away. Oh no, she's took a out. Okay, that's okay. She was checking the time. It, the, the, it's on your wrist, Manisha. That's what time it is. Who practiced karate with a watch on? Okay. Okay. So guys, we were talking about kind of driving, driving into into uh, into Shoma Dash, yeah? So I want you to use that. Okay, so from here, I want you to, I want you to kind of a little bit more kind of Jukamai feeling. Jukamai. So so like what I don't want you to do now is is then kind of rotate into showman and then kick my game. I want you to feel like your that back leg is driving your hip in, which leads to the my game straight away. Okay, so well, we'll talk about this in a minute, but but from here, this from here, back leg my game, back, more washing gary, kazuki. And maintain your form. Okay? And then shuffle back. Okay, try it. Knee one, two, punch. And change the leg. Okay, itch. And change the leg. Okay, knee. Try to land in good form, yeah? Although you're going from Jukamai, you're finishing good Kihon. Okay, Sam. Okay, she. One more, and go. Okay, okay, so the important point guys, when, you, when you're when you practicing this for now, just for me, like maintain uh, kind of form and Gakazuki at the end. Yeah, this is important because we're gonna add stuff. But ultimately, um, I think, like now we're kind of trying to develop that, 
that strength of rotating back into Gakazuki. Yeah? So I kind of encouraged people to drive into Shomodachi um, when we were just doing the kicks. Um, but like some people, you know, using your upper body, some people unable to kind of counter rotate after the Moshigiri. I really want you to kind of really uh, work on that. So, so as you're as you're coming around the Moshigiri, it's that back leg that's driving in Gakazuki. Yeah. So, so really try to get that as much as possible. Second thing is that this is my giri. You're going from Jukamai and you're in this kind of Shizen position. Certainly not hammy and hip completely back, but not showing, yeah? You're in that kind of natural position. Then what you want you to do is use that back leg power and that hip power, but not to rotate. I want you to use that to drive, driving in. So it's a, it's a very subtle difference, but really important difference. So drive in. Drive in for that my giri. So it, ultimately, the weight of the leg is going to pull you pull you around to Shawman. But what I don't want you to do is one leg kick. Again, it's just one of those tells. You understand? That's safe. Yes. So it's actually the leg who's initiating the hip in this moment. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's like, like you can't shift your body mass without, without you pushing from your leg. So really, What's ultimately, every shifting of body mass starts from your leg starts from you pushing against the floor. So, so yeah, it's your back leg that's driving. Was uh, Sensei? Yeah. yeah could you say, is, is that, when that back leg moves, would it, would it be right saying it's maybe 80, 70% loose moving that, or is there a push from your foot? Well, say it again. Would it be about 70% loose moving that back leg, or is there a push from your foot? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's not, it's not your, your, um, it's not only your glute, yeah? So you want, you want to have the ability to, of course, push from that glute, kind of you're engaging your thigh, you're pushing your calf, and even to the point where, you know, you're, you're using your calf muscle to get that, because you, you push, well, then you also push, and then you're quickly engaging that, that leg for kicking preparation, yeah? So it's all your leg in one unit, going from your, your bum right the way down to your big toe. Is there any heel in that, Sensei? Say again. Is there any heel in that? No. no. Heel, your heel is dead. Right. Like, and we practice an awful lot of kind of pivoting, landing, stuff like that. Or, well, we don't practice landing on your heel. But we, we practice a lot of pivoting on your heel and stuff like that. But this is just a training mechanism to, to kind of really work in a thigh muscle. Right. But ultimately, when you start moving, everything is on the ball of the foot and using your arch and your calf to produce that explosive part. Right. Okay. Okay, guys. So, come on, Miss. Just try, yeah? Just try, push through that, that stance, push, push through, then round and landing. Good gag sticking. Okay, try, come on, Miss. Suddenly, I hear a noise behind me that it makes me deeply inquisitive. <laughs> Not in the rotation. Don't, don't put the effort into that. Put the effort into. No. Yeah, that could. It feels awkward because there's no target. Yeah? If there was a target, then your foot would be going in. Oops. Abigail driving into strong Gakazuki. Yeah, use that back leg. Then Peter, you don't have to you don't have to kick high. So, so don't kick high and then, then feel like you're over rotating. Yeah. Even if you're kicking low, what's really important is that you have that ability to counter rotate. So you're controlling it with your hip. You two, uh, Anya, yeah, Anna, you're you 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 need to counter rotate after the Morshig area. Yeah? Uh, Raul, you're rotating too much on that Maya Gary. Don't rotate, push, drive in, feeling with your, your, if you're kicking with your left leg, driving forward with your left hip rather than rotating your left hip. It's a subtle difference, yeah? Okay, perfection has been reached. Okay, so um, this is all like about kind of, you know, quite, strict kind of weight training for your body yeah 
this is all, all what Keon is really. I mean, you know, there's a few things, but, but a lot of it is, is about just training your body, gaining strong, gaining fit, flexible, elastic, that stuff like that. So really, if you're like this, we're specifically working on, well, a number of things, but one of the things is driving back into Gakazuki, right? So if you're kicking so high or you're kicking with, you know, kind of such power that you can't then compensate and come back afterwards, then you're not developing that counter rotation. So above all, after that washing area, make sure you can drive back into Gakazuki and use that supporting leg to do it. You understand? Okay, okay, good. Okay, from here, yoi. So again, do come on, do come on. Okay, so my giri, mawashi giri, Gakazuki, Gakazuki, Gakazuki. Yoriash, yoriash, yoriash. And come back. Okay, and then change, yeah? Oh, that's, 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 that's it. Okay, so my giri, mawashi giri, Gakazuki back, Gakazuki. And then come back. What's that? Okay, so watch out, Justina. <laughs> I got lost on the uh, Agouke. <laughs> you just saw the Agouke. Like we did at the beginning, that room missed. I just missed the Yoko Gari in Agouke. Okay, okay. Again, one more time. Okay, so Mahi Gari, Mawashi Gari, Gakzuki, Yoriyashi, Agouke, Gakzuki. Do you come on? Okay, each, me, Sachi, go. And you come on. Okay, each, me, stand, chi, go. You come on. Understand? Easy, easy. Okay, nice and nice, guys. Give it a go. One count all the way through. I am watching. Then, Alex, make sure you drive into that Gakazuki, first Gakazuki. Christian, you're using your upper body to do Mwashigiri and you're back spending when you're doing Agu UK. Good solid stance when you land in that Gakazuki first Gakazuki, yeah? Well, actually, both Gakazukis, really. Roger, you're leaning back on the Maigiri. Come, Reaver, I'm watching you. That's it, a little bit more locked into that Gakazuki in a time muscle squeeze, Reva, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, take your time, uh, Andre, yeah? Take your time, do it right, yeah? Much better slow correct than fast and bad. Also, your dogi is the wrong way around. That's how dead people dress. Just saying, hashtag just saying. <laughs> Watch that stance, guys. Watch that stance, Sophia. Your front knee's moving like a Elvis Presley impersonator. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just, just for uh, people's information, like we always have the... Uh, your left side of your dogie goes over your right. So if you've got a, a logo, it should be outside. It should, never, it should never be the other way around. Well, and this is like a normal Japanese kimono or yukata, okay? But when they when you die and they dress you in your kimono, they wrap it the other way around. So we wrap it this way around. So left goes over right. And then when you die and you get cremated, they wrap it the other way around. So if you're ever dressed like that in, uh, in Japan, they think you're a ghost. True story. <laughs> it's true. I saw a ghost. <laughs> okay, spin power, guys. Okay, left leg forward. Okay, one count, five moves. Okay, itch. Knee. Sun. Chi. Look! Shitch! And last one, last one! Ha! It's good kick! Cha! 
Hey, yeah. Okay, okay, if he's go. Ready? Oh. Okay, guys, one minute break. Sensei? Yes, Susanna. Sensei, yeah. Uh, in the Agi, okay, my front uh, knee is uh, bubbling. Do I have to put more weight on the front knee? No, no, it's not about weight. Or pressure. It's about, um, it's pressure. about kind of stability of your stabilizing your knee. So, you know, like we, we obviously learn when we start karate, like rotating our hip, rotating our hip, we're trying to maintain stability. Then this is, this, we can't just kind of make it heavier. We've got to kind of counteract the rotation. So if you're rotating your hip back, obviously this knee wants to follow it. Yeah. Or if you're rotating your, your knee forward, obviously this knee wants to be pushed out. So you've got to use either your inner thigh muscle or your out, like IT band, the outside of your leg, to stabilize that knee. So as you're making ham knee, you're actively pulling your knee out. And as you Was make showman, you're actively pulling your knee in. So by actively doing this in the direction that you don't want it to go or that you that it wants to go, should I say, then you, you end up kind of stabilizing the knee. So I'm kind of micromanaging that, 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 that uh, part of my knee in order to counteract um, the natural movement that when I rotate my hip. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, that was your minute, guys. Okay. Okay, so, um, we're just going to do uh, a little bit of uh, of, of Kihon to, to finish, yeah? Then, again, I want you to think about, like, all we're trying to do with this kind of sequence is, you know, challenge your body. So make sure, like I like just said to Suzanne, uh, stability of your stance, kind of, but also kind of maintain your center line, kicking from your center, moving from your center, preparing correctly, uh, making sure you're synchronizing your, your kind of driving into stance uh, with your blocking, punching arm. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. So, so from here, yeah. Okay. Left leg forward. All we're gonna do is make a stoich. Okay. Then from here, my ash, my giddy. So my giddy, look at it. And then come back. Okay. Right leg, itch. Knee, And back. Okay. Itch. Knee, and back, one more. Okay, itch, and knee, time. And back. Okay, guys, just try that four times. Uh, two on each side, let me see what you're doing. Go for it. What's up, Linda? My battery's going to die. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so, um, guys, let me just kind of pull in a few themes that we've, we've been doing for the last uh, 40 minutes or so. Okay, first of all, um, this driving into stop, then, you know, often, like the weight of the preparatory hand kind of takes control, yeah? I mean, this, this is the hand that you're blocking with. You're preparing and you're blocking, it's doing the most work. Uh, and so often it can, in your mind, it can have the most weight both kind of like, well, not physically, of course, but, but in your mind, your, your intention is in your left hand as you block. And so your body will follow it. If, if your hand goes that way, your body goes that way. Hand goes that way, your body goes that way, yeah? And of course, we know that we're counter-rotating. Uh, but one of the keys to that is using, using your preparatory hand with equal intent, equal uh, kind of keeping it alive. So the first thing you want to do is, as you're preparing this hand, 
this is already doing something. Have in your mind that you are kind of already blocking, feeling the way, kind of having your guard up. Like, you know, there's not many kind of low grades here. Most people are black belts. Then this is a very kind of basic way of, of making the shape. Once you've made the shape, then it becomes alive. There's a, this, is, this hand is dead. This hand is alive, yeah? It's ready to do something, okay? So make sure it has, it's alive and it has intention. And what that ends up doing is that you start to counter rotate your leg wanting to drive your body into this way. So, so put intention in your, your, in your preparatory hand, yeah? And, and by doing that, you have this counter rotation at the end. You're squeezing as you start and then counter rotating for the, for the stop. Understand? Okay, that's one point. Second point. Okay, this my daily. Then we again we we are practicing we we're, we're practicing very still kind of kind of kicking from shaman. And generally speaking, we kick from shaman my daily. Um, but really, what was important is that you're kicking from your core rather than kicking from shaman, and you kind of we were kind of micromanaging our upper body. But we were kicking from our pelvis. That pelvis girdle driving forward and kick my daily. Then I can I can do lots of things with my pelvis. I can push it forward, I can stick it back, I can go side, I can side, I can rotate, I can rotate. But generally, I only do that on the dance floor. So, for this, just one. Push, push, push my again. You don't need to rotate. If I want to kick Rue, if I want to kick Rue and I'm in this position, there is no way, or like I'm in like this open position, like classically stop position, but, but like I'm not going to rotate in order to kick. In fact, I... If by doing this, like it's very difficult for me to kick, but in this position, it's easy to kick. I can just drive in, driving in this fin. Do you understand? So from this stop position, push, push my head, then look at it. Okay, rather than kind of allowing your hips to collapse. And last point, of course, we practice this, this synchronization. So even though, even though you've kicked, and you've pushed with this my daily. You've still got life in that in that back leg. So you're driving in, you've still got life to drive in for the gap, uh, for the look at it in this case. Understand? Fancy one question. Yes. It's Alex. Uh, would that be acceptable in uh, in the kata? Keep the hand open? Well, yeah. I mean um, you don't have to you don't have to go like this in a kata. Well, like it depends, like, it depends if, if, if I saw some high grade doing kata like this, then I think they don't know what they're doing. If, if I saw kind of someone who's kind of knee down and above do, blocking like this, I, I, I'd, I'd think that they'd have, they'd had no development in their karate. Okay. Like now maybe you're referring to competition or grading. Well, if someone's, if someone's taking knee down, sand down, up to whatever grading, and they're doing this in the in the form. Then, I, then for me, it's like a they haven't moved on. Um, shodan, of course, if you're taking shodan, this is still super basic, yeah. So you're still proving that you can make those basic shapes for shodan. But for nidan grading and above, you've proven that you've done the nidan uh, the basic shapes. Okay, so that's one point. Of course, competition is a different thing. Like I don't teach competition karate. Competition karate has to be super clean and super perfect and blah blah blah. So I, I'm not going to comment about competition. This is not competition karate, okay? But normal karate, you've got to have it. It's got to be alive. It's got to be ready to do something. It's 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 your hikite hand. You're literally grabbing and pulling as you make a strike. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. One more minute, guys. Just work on that. Try to maintain your form as you're doing the Maigiri, yeah? You've got that shito. Your hips going in, but your, your upper body's not being affected at all. Pull D a little bit straight on, yeah? A little bit kind of engaged, a little bit more, yeah? Okay, guys, let's try some part. Okay, one count, left leg first. Shito Maigiri, look at it. Itch! And D! 
If there was one thing that I would say, kind of the common theme of uh, people finding the things difficult or finding these elements difficult, it's core strength. So as soon as you know you're in stall, you're in stall, and as soon as that leg comes off the ground, as soon as you start to drive that hip in, everything buckles and goes. You've got to be able to maintain your form whilst driving forward into the nookie yeah, and this. It's not just simply saying to yourself, I've got to maintain my form. It's having the physicality to do that. And that comes from kind of core strength and being able to engage and disengage and kind of micromanage you and your, your, your internal structure, your muscle structure uh, to maintain that kind of outward shape. Understand? And it's, it's, more, it's not so important about kind of just the form of it. It's about connection. So that when you actually do kick in, that you're connected to that kind of driving leg. As soon as you break that form, really, it's significant that you've broken the connection. Understand? Okay. Go on, stop leaning against your windowsill. Every time I look at you. <laughs> Good boy, go on. Okay, last one, guys. Last couple of minutes. Okay. Okay, again from Shizenta, yeah? Okay. Let's go from left hand forward. Okay, so Tommy Conde, Samonski. So sliding forward, Samonski. Okay, so there's your Judah, Judah, an inch. And come back. Keep our right hand up, yeah? So left hand draw, stepping. Knee, crunch, crunch, crunch. And back. Okay, show me, show me, show me. Hip square, hip square, hip square each time. Okay, here. And Yorias, you're driving in at least a stance and a half. Chin. Well, when I say at least a stance and a half, a stance and a half, you don't really want to be aiming for much more than that. Go. Rook. Three punches, yeah? Andre, three punches. Jordan punch, two down punch, two down punch. Okay, shit. Uh, same leg, same hand, first one, Christian, yeah? Left leg, left hand first. Okay, ha! Hey! Okay, okay. Guys, last couple of minutes. First of all, be ninja. Don't be an elephant. What's like the smallest person in the dojo who makes the biggest noise? Okay, so you're sliding, slide, driving and sliding. So, so from here, that kind of striving foot, or sorry, that stepping foot, doesn't leave the ground. You're just driving in each time. You're not kind of, having this sound, yeah? That's point number one. Of course, second point is that you're, you're challenging this driving leg, like how much explosive power, how much explosive power can you create from one leg? So you're trying to kind of shift all your body mass with that one leg to driving in, yeah? So you, that's what you're trying to do. Like, uh, next point is that you're trying to drive, relax, drive, relax. So there's always kind of fuel in the tank. So you're, you know, you're, you're stepping forward, punching. Well, relaxing, driving in, relaxing, driving in. So you're twitching from that leg, that glutes every single time to synchronize with the the uh, the drive of that punching hand. And last, of course, when all those things are going on, you maintain your center line. You're not leaning in. Understand? Okay, one minute, guys. Give it a go. Let me see. Don't rush those punches, yeah? Don't feel the need to have some sort of kind of one, one, two timing. Just punch slowly. Abigail, don't be going one, one, two. There's no need. One, two, three. Focus, Linda, focus, look forward. No fidgeting in your stance, Elizabeth. And look up, head up. Try not to bob up and down, yeah?
Okay. Okay, good. Have we got it? Have we good? Okay, let's try. Last time, guys, last time. So, spin power, yeah? Okay. So, start with, already start in this preparatory position, just because, again, I want you to feel that kind of intent with your leading arm. That's your intention. It kind of twists your body, opens your chest as that driving that goes in, and then you can use that to catapult that, that first technique out, yeah? So, so don't start from this position. Already start from that position and use your, your movements into stance to kind of ripple through to produce the Orizuki, yeah? Okay, let's try it. Yo, yo, speed up hard. Okay. And in. Sa. And Go. And rock. Shit. Last one, Kiai. Hard. Ah, yummy. Nice. Good. Okay. Okay, guys. Any questions? Are we good? Okay, so just in conclusion, yeah? Like, um, like there's a couple of under, underlying themes there, yeah? Firstly, of course, maintaining center line as you kind of challenge your stance. Maintaining stance as you challenge your stance. Uh, trying to kind of synchronize uh, that, um, that kind of drive with your technique. So whether it be the drive of the back leg when you do the Samozuki just, or the drive of the back leg as you're driving in like UK and Yoriash, or the drive of the leg when you're kicking my gear, yeah? All, the, all this kind of back leg drive to produce the technique. Whilst kind of going through the conduit of your pelvis, your pelvic girdle, rather than the tension in your upper body. So that, that's a one important thing. Second important thing is it's trying to strip away effort. So we're trying to find that form where you, you're kind of using your core, using your driving leg, and then strip away everything else you don't need whilst maintaining that form. And then like last point is like form. Form is not just like that pretty shape. It's about connection in your body. So like going back to what Alex said, you know, for me, this shows, this shows kind of like the correct shape but it doesn't show the correct form because the form is being much more connected and ready to do something rather than shape, shape. One, one is a little bit hollow, one has intention. So just trying to have that kind of, uh, that shape in your, in your movement to represent or to demonstrate internal connection. Understand? Okay. Okay, if you to get hands by your side. Thank you.